So, game two just wrapped up, and it was a bloodbath for the Lakers. They dominated the Heat. They, the moment the game started, I knew that the Lakers were going to win. In game one, as we all know, Goran Dragic and Bam Adebayo got injured, and they both missed game two. Jimmy Butler had an ankle tweak, so he was not 100% healthy. And then we're also going to be looking about the narrative that this championship is not easy and why that is totally false. Versus, I don't know why people like Skip Bayless are creating those claims. Those are just crazy claims. They probably don't believe in them themselves. So yeah, so looking at game two, they shot 34% from three. That is good for the Lakers. You know, a fun fact is that if the Lakers shoot 30%, from three over 30 percent they're undefeated they have never lost that's how dominant the lakers are oh of course you have kcp lebron's a decent three-point shooter ad can knock it down javel mcgee can knock it down kcp can knock it down caruso 25 percent of the times so he's the goat but it doesn't matter uh and then you got like before avery bradley of course he's not there you got, of course, J.R. Smith. So they have good shooting. But then Danny Green hasn't been shooting well. Caruso is not shooting well. KCP has been shooting pretty well. I'm impressed with KCP. I am a Lakers fan, so I am, of course, happy to see that they're up too well. But I am not happy to see that injuries are laying apart in this, like, this, like, easy run, like some people are saying. But I wish we just had some fun games, some really close games, competitive these have all been over 10 point blowouts and I don't know if the Heat can come back. Jimmy Butler would do his best. Duncan Robinson was unplayable this game. And like the Heat had the offense. They were doing good on offense, but they couldn't get any stops. The Lakers had 100 points before it, the start of the fourth quarter. That's insane. Of course, they were shooting well. It seems like they couldn't miss. Jimmy Butler tried his best. He put out like 25 points, 12 assists, 8 rebounds, flirted with the triple-double. And so, I don't know what he can do next. Without Bam to guard AD, AD is just going to feast on them. And I don't know if it's going to be LeBron James, Finals MVP, or Anthony Davis. They're both in super well. AD had like 32 points and 14 rebounds. A big comeback from the Nuggets series where he put up like 5 boards. And LeBron quietly put up 33 points, 9 rebounds, and 9 assists. That's pretty good. And then, the third option, the third best player on the team, as a Lakers fan, I gotta admit, it's Rajon Rondo. Rondo, playoff Rondo, is 100% real. In his first game back after the injury, he was awful. And people were saying, oh, playoff Rondo isn't gonna be there. Even my brother said, if if Rondo plays one game, the Rock, uh, the Lakers will win in five. If Rondo plays two games, the Lakers will win in six. If he wins three games, the Lakers are going to win in seven. So, a lot of Lakers fans, including like me and my brother, that we assumed that Rondo was not going to be very good. Not the old playoff Rondo. Because his regular season was awful. He was unplayable with LeBron. But, as we've seen in the playoffs, a playmaker alongside LeBron James can be crucial. We've seen it with like Kyrie Irving with uh I don't know who I don't I forgot who's on the Cavs who play makes a lot maybe like a George Hill but uh, it's just gonna be so tough for the Heat to come back of course Kyle Kuzma had a pretty good game putting up 10 points I saw him knock down a few threes I kind of oh I think so and I kind of feel bad for um Danny Green he shot like one for six or one for eight from downtown uh just ever since he, it seems like he wasted all of his energy on the 2013 NBA Finals where he was super good. And ever since, he's not been very good in the in the playoffs. And last year on the Raptors, he was a 40, like 5% three-point shooter in the regular season. But in the playoffs, he shot like 20, high 20s percent. That's not acceptable. His shooting, oh, he will provide some decent defense at least, but... He's definitely going to need a step up. KCP, the third leading scorer, he's been doing pretty good, I must admit. From the start of the season, putting up like one point in his first two games. He had a very slow start, but now he's definitely emerged. So yeah, so now talking about the Heat, of course, Jimmy Butler had a really good game. And Tyler Hero had a pretty good game. Kelly Olynyk, sure, he had 24 points. But the thing is that 
just looking at the box score, you need some context. See, the thing is that Kelly Olynyk put up 24 points, but let Anthony Davis get 32 points. They couldn't stop him. If they put Jay Crowder on him, he just scored. If you put Kelly Olynyk, he especially scored. And so Kelly Olynyk, although he did provide much offense, his defense didn't come in. Kendrick none. He had some foul trouble, and Jimmy couldn't carry. He needs Bam out of bio. As like he said, he is like the leader and the glue guy. So without Bam, if he doesn't return in Game Three or out for the whole season, Lakers at four. I'm sorry, they can't stop Anthony Davis. AD's probably gonna drop forty, and if Bam's out, I have AD Finals MVP. And so, yeah, so now looking at this narrative, for some reason, people are creating that LeBron has an easy championship. No way. A championship is a championship. Sure, the KD Warriors championships were not, like, the best, but just look at, like, uh, what's an example? You have, let me think. So just the team that was... A team that had a pretty easy run, but you kind of forget about it. So, like, the... uh, I can't think of an example, but... Okay, so basically, they passed... They beat the Blazers in five. Some people assumed that that the Blazers were, like, one of the top uh, eight seeds of all time. But then Damian Lillard got injured, and then he he left the bubble, and the Blazers knew they they were out. So they beat... They lost game one, but then destroyed them four in a row. LeBron averaged like a triple-double. Then against Houston, people are also wondering, if there's a team that can beat the Lakers, it's the small ball Rockets. And sure, they they won game one. Russ kind of had a pretty good game one. James Harden was unstoppable. But then they won four in a row. They clamped Russ. They let Russ... They let Russ shoot threes. Whenever James Harden got the ball, they double teamed. So they would have to force like P.J. Tucker or sometimes uh, Eric Gordon to play make. And they're not good at that. So they beat them in five. And then the Clippers blew a 3-1 lead to the Nuggets. And you just got to face... You just got to face what's in front of you. They faced the Nuggets, and they beat them in 5-2. So, for example, like the Toronto Raptors. Sure, Kyle Lowry's championship, that's a very valuable ring. But then, against the Warriors, they had they there were a bunch of injuries. So you just got to face what 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 is against you. So then, sure enough, they did win. So yeah, that's what LeBron is doing. He's just been de- destroying every team. Winning every series in five. They're up 2-0 right now, so... If Bam comes back, Goran Dragic is probably out for the whole season. But at least they have Kendrick Nunn to replace him. It's just, I think it's over for the Heat. So this narrative makes no sense. And I don't know why these, these like, NBA analysis are making these hot takes. They make no sense. So yeah, that's going to be the video. This was just basically a ramble. And I thank you all so much for watching. Remember to subscribe to the channel and like the video. I'll see you all next time.